So we are in Ableton Live 11 now, and we are looking at the Ableton instruments here. Some of the Ableton instruments have incorporated MPE natively. That would be sampler, simpler, and wavetable here. So if we drop in sampler, for example, we can see in the title bar right here to the right, it says MPE. If we go to the MIDI, this is where we can start setting everything up. Uh, if we hit the seaboard block though, you can see that we are just getting the slide information in at the moment. You can see that light turning on right here. And that essentially just means that we need one more thing, which is the Ableton MPE control MIDI effect. Bringing this in, you have control over the pressure slide and touch. You can adjust the ranges in order to have more expressive control uh, with your rolly block. You can set the minimum and the maximum ranges. And you can turn this into an S curve where you have these kind of two sections. Right now they're linked together and we can unlink them and have control over individual parts. So you have a little bit of control there, but what we wanna look at as well is this little box. So if we hit this arrow right here, this opens up this section and we're looking at MPE to MIDI. Essentially, these boxes turn MPE data into, um, I'm gonna say normal MIDI data. Press to AT, AT stands for aftertouch. Any press information is turning to aftertouch. Any slide information is gonna turn into uh, the modulation wheel information. And then the uh, note pitch bend is gonna turn into the normal pitch bend. What we wanna do for things like sampler would be to turn on uh, these controls. You can see that we're getting uh, press information, pitch bend, and the modulation wheel. Uh, but we're not getting the slide, and that's because we turn the slide into modulation data. We can turn that off and we'll get slide now. That's what we're going to need for something like sampler. The same would go for the simpler MIDI effect. We would need to do the same exact thing. Wavetable, however, uh, has this incorporated in this really awesome way right here. You can adjust these ranges and these are automatically applied. <laughs> And you can see if we're sliding up on the seaboard block that the oscillator one position is moving. But what we are more interested in at the moment is messing around with the MPE control for the rest of Ableton Live's instruments. Let's go ahead and bring in the first one here, analog. We want to also bring in the MPE control and we'll drop that in as well. Originally, you'll notice when we play analog, we're not getting any slide information, really any MPE information. And that's where we would need to open the settings, turn those conversions on. And now we're gonna have to switch some settings here. First, let's start at the bottom. The note pitch bend that turns into the pitch bend uh, information here. So we can see on analog here that there is a pitch bend range right here, and it's set to two. I want to go ahead and set that to 12 because I know my seaboard block has a range of 12. So we can set that up. And the other thing we will have to do is make sure that that is the same in the Rolly dashboard. And you can see that it's not. We actually have it set to 48 at the moment. But I already know that analog only goes up to a pitch bend range of 12 which essentially means one octave up and one octave down. Now that we set the Rolly dashboard to 12 pitch bend range and analog to pitch bend range 12. Now you'll see if we slide, we're getting the actual notes here. So the other thing we might want to do is uh, the slide and adding that to the modulation wheel, at least in analog, is we can hit vibrato here. The vibrato is what's actually set up to the modulation wheel. What we need to go to is this amount to modulation wheel right here. This slider is just how much the modulation wheel will affect the vibrato intensity. And you need to have vibrato enabled in order for this to happen. So let's just crank that to 100 and see how that sounds now. Mm -hmm. 
So you can adjust that accordingly, however you see fit. Uh, the only one that I'm not sure of for analog is the press to aftertouch. I just don't know if there is aftertouch enabled for any analog controls. We can also do the same thing for collision in some ways. We just opened up a fresh instance of collision. And if we go to the MIDI tab here, we can see again that we have options for pitch bend, modulation wheel, and aftertouch. You can use the same MPE control as we just did in analog with these three buttons still pressed. And we can still do some work in collision as well. We could change the pitch bend and we can put that to, let's say, resonant one, resonator one pitch. And we might want to set that to 12 as well. And we could do the same for the modulation wheel, maybe, you know, the LFO rate and the aftertouch. Maybe we can set to the mallet stiffness. So let's see what we got. These are going to be shorter sounds too. So hearing the different changes might be a little harder, but you can hear it in the pitch bend. That's what we can do for collision. So I tried to do something similar with the drum rack however drum rack is obviously a little bit different but there's no real native mpe capabilities for the drum rack which kind of makes sense so the electric instrument i'm not entirely sure if i'm able to do anything in this one it doesn't look like it impulse i kind of feel the same i don't know if we could do anything for this the operator however this is another Ableton instrument that we can use with MPE. If we go into this tab here, we can set the aftertouch parameter, pitch bend, and modulation wheel here. We can set aftertouch to, you know, maybe something like FM drive. Pitch bend is technically already set up. We just need to set the right range. And the modulation wheel, maybe we can set to uh, LFO rate, although I don't think we have an LFO on at the moment. Let's actually change aftertouch to filter frequency just to try something a little bit different and we'll turn the filter on. We'll bring this down just a little bit. If we crank this aftertouch to 100, let's see what happens. So as I'm pressing down harder on the Seaboard block, it's actually changing the filter frequency. We can see that right here. Let me see if we can affect the LFO and use that with the modulation wheel. That's a really cool effect. From there, if we really wanted to, we can start fine tuning some of these parameters. So, you know, we can adjust the pressure, we can adjust slide and pitch as well by selecting it here. The way you can think about it is bending in to the right here. It takes you longer to get to the maximum range. So this is a good way if you want to limit the effect a little bit more. This is when you would want to lean into the right like that. If you want the effect to be more pronounced and happen faster, you want it to bulge out to the left like this. You'll notice it has a much steeper slope in the beginning, so you're going to hear the effect faster. Whereas if we move it to the right, it takes longer for the effect to sweep in, and it takes a little more effort for me to play in. Let's go ahead and move on to tension. I think this is the last instrument we'll be looking at. We can see the pitch bend range here. We can definitely set that to 12, and let's see. Let's see if we can bend. We can definitely bend. We do have vibrato right here in the strings. For tension, vibrato is mapped to the modulation wheel, so we can turn the modulation wheel up to hear it more. For tension, you can hear that vibrato coming in. All 
All right, you guys, so there it is. I wanted to give you a quick update on how you can use MPE control with the other Ableton instruments. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. Uh, leave a like on the video, man. It really helps me out. Consider subscribing too. I'm doing more Ableton live content, audio visual content, um, and some really cool stuff with this PS3 controller. So subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you once again. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, once again, guys, my name is Intempest. Thank you so much. We'll catch you later.